Okay, that was all about the concepts. Now let's get some hands-on demo for these services. I hope you are excited for this. Let's jump into the AWS console now. Okay, so this is your AWS VPC console. So if you're new to this and if you haven't watched the previous episodes in VPCs, so just remove this very carefully that the current VPC that you have here is based on the location that you have. So this is the Mumbai location that we have here. So AP South 1. And the status is service is operating normally so that's well and good you don't have any problems and everything that you have created on your own or it has been set by default will be listed here so we previously have discussed about site-to-site -site vpn connections and virtual private gateways and there is one more service that we need to discuss today so that is direct connect just search here so now there is a change in the ui that you can see that you get to search directly from here otherwise we used to go here in the service panel and we used to search the same so now you can do it directly from here so not a problem so just click on direct connect so this is the starting page that you will get if you have not created any resources but if suppose actually i don't know what's the property of this website if you have visited it once and if you haven't created any resources or anything also it will just take you to the actual page itself so this is the one that actually you need to see if you haven't created any connections yet so here it actually tells you that it lets you establish a dedicated network connection to aws and uh, connects directly to an aws device from your router at aws direct connect location so this is the connection that we want to create so the router that you have for aws will be at the aws direct connect location and your router will be it will be at your place or your office at your data center okay so don't worry about that then you have to just click on create connection see so here there are two options that we get to create the connection one is the classic and one is the connection wizard so what does it say so the classic says that create connections one at a time best for augmenting an existing setup so we don't have this existing setup yet but if suppose i had to choose this then what I have to do, I have to provide the connection name like uh, my connection. I'm not going to create it. So don't worry about that because we don't have any company or we are not affiliated to any other organization so that we can create one. So we'll just see the features or the form that we are getting to create one. Okay. So there's the location. So location in which your connection is located. So you can just choose one from here based on the, so if suppose it is in Hyderabad, you can just click on Hyderabad. So as you can see here, this is the global service and it does not affiliate itself with any other region specific. So you don't have to worry about this. You can just create it in any region that you want. So this is your location and uh, this is the port speed that I already told you the desired bandwidth for your new connection. So it can be like one Gbps or 10 Gbps. Okay, so if it is on-premise, so you connect through an AWS Direct Connect partner or you can just uncheck this. So it will just choose the APN partners. So if you want to choose the Direct Connect partner, you can just select that and you can choose the service provider. So with that, actually, I told you before that in India, we have Tata Communications working as the Direct Connect partner. The Tata Communications is the one whom you're going to hand over the LOA or the letter of authorization. And these are the people who are going to create your connection and you have to hand over the LOA or the letter of authorization to them. In post which you can add additional settings like tag. So you can just add a tag by giving name and the value. So this is all about the classic connection. And let's suppose I want to have a more precise wizard like structure that, that I want to use. So I can just choose the connection wizard, which actually create connections using your resiliency recommendations recommended for new setups. So if this is your new setup, then just click on this. You see there are three options here. That is what I wanted to tell you before, but I did not say that because anyways, we were about to discuss this in a demo. So, uh, so the first one is maximum resiliency. So maximum resiliency for critical workloads. So if you can just read this, you will understand what exactly it is trying to tell you. So you can achieve maximum resiliency for critical workloads by using separate connections that terminate on separate devices in more than one locations as shown in the figure. This topology provides resiliency against device connectivity and complete connection failures as well. So what exactly it tells is that you have more than one direct connect locations. This endpoint fails or this endpoint fails. You don't have to worry about anything. It will have more than one to actually suffice your requirement and it will never let you fail or it will provide you the highest resiliency that you can get. And the next one is 
high resiliency. So if you choose this, what happens is, so it will have only one direct connect endpoint in each one. So, but in the maximum you get two, but here you will get only one and that will be connected to the customer. So here as well, you can achieve high resiliency for critical workloads by using two single connections to multiple locations. And this topology provides resiliency against connection failures caused by a fiber cut or a device failure. So if this fails, this works. If this, this fails and this works. So this also helps prevent a complete location failure of this total location fails also not a problem. You will be able to reach. And the next one is development and uh, testing. So this is, this uses a single connection and you can see that you can achieve development and test resiliency for non-critical workloads by using separate connections that terminate on separate devices on one location. So this topology provides resiliency against device failure but does not provide resiliency against location failure because this is just set to one location but even though it is set to one location it has a termination endpoint for two so it terminates to two endpoints as it is already written that it terminates on separate devices in one location so based on that even if one fails then you will have a resiliency of even if connecting to your customer data center but it is not that useful for the highly critical workloads it is just for development and testing so let's suppose i choose connection wizard and i choose development and testing let's suppose i click on next it will provide me with the options to actually configure the type of bandwidth that i need 1 gb 2 gb 3 gb up to 40 gbps and i can provide the location that i have so ap south 1 ap south 1 yeah so let's suppose i have SCT Hyderabad DC1, so data center 1, and the service provider that is Tata Communications. So if you want to choose any other, let's suppose I choose Mumbai. So you get more number of uh, service providers. Bharti Airtel is there, NetMagic Solutions is there, Reliance Geo is there, Geo, Geo people. So Stifi is there, Vodafone is there, Vodafone Idea is there. They're, I think they have collaborated now, so it's not a problem. Why? Why? Vi? So that's it. And uh, you have additional settings like add tag, like previous one, and you can just click on next. So here, as I already told you that it will provide you two connections in the same location that you have and for resiliency, of course, and uh, this will cost you an estimate of $0.60 per hour and monthly 439.20 for port usage and additional data transfer charges. Okay. Billing will begin once the connection between the AWS router and your router is established or 90 days after you ordered the port, whichever comes first. Okay, so these are the ones who will actually do that job for you. Once you create this, then the next step will be you can get the LOA or the letter of authorization. But we are not going to do that. So we will not create any connections here. So now the virtual interfaces, if you want to create any virtual interfaces, you can just click on this. So you can create a private interface or you can create a public interface as I told you, or you can create a transit interface. So let's suppose I choose private, I can provide the virtual interface name that I want and the connection. So let's suppose the physical connection on which the new virtual interface will be provisioned. So if I had created that, then that would have shown in the drop down list, but it is not. So I'm not getting anything here. And it is asking me for the virtual interface owner, the account that will own the virtual interface. So it will be my account or it can be another account. Okay, so uh, you can either choose a gateway type of direct connect gateways that is recommended or you can use the virtual private gateway. So there are two options here for us with the gateway types. So if you want to connect it to the direct connect gateway, so as I already told you, we can create a virtual private uh, private virtual interface to connect to our uh, location and the direct connect gateway uh, so that we can connect multiple VPCs. So if you want to do that, you can use the direct connect gateway here or else you can choose a virtual private gateway to connect to the single VPC in the same region. And let's suppose you want to create or choose a direct connect gateway, then you have to provide that once you've created it, or you can create uh, or you can choose one of the virtual private gateways. And the next one is the VLAN. So the VLAN or the virtual local area network number that you also can provide for the new virtual interface that you're going to create and the BGP ASN. So this is something that we have already discussed before in the side to side VPN. So if you haven't check that you can go for like you can just uh, read more about that and you can check the video about we have discussed already on the autonomous system number so you can provide that it is for the route propagation and here also you can add the additional settings like uh, whether it should be uh, ipv4 or ipv6 based on that you have to provide the router peering so you have to provide the cider blocks for this one and the bgp authentication key and all these actually this is not that important it is 
too in depth for the exam as well so i don't think so we need to go over that and so once you have filled on the details and then you can create the virtual private interface so if you have the uh, private interface then you can connect to your uh, EC2 instances and if you create for the public one you can just uh, access your S3 or S3 Glacier and for the transit actually I'll discuss it when we discuss transit gateways so we'll keep that aside for now then click on cancel so when coming back to lag so as I already told you lag is basically your uh, link aggregation group so you can just create a, a link aggregation group with using the existing connections or by requesting new connections so let's suppose we are using an existing connection to create the lag so you have to provide the lag name and existing connection details so the number of connections that you want so next is the number of new connections that is optimal so as we already told that four connection is the max so you can have four here and the minimum links can be two because you have to link isn't it you cannot have link with one connection you need more than one connection so the minimum is two and the maximum will be four and that is how you create the lag and you can just provide the tags here so in lag what we do is we just couple both of the connections or more than one connection that we have and we try to create it as a single logical uh, managed connection so that's what we are trying to do here and you can request new connection as well so you can just provide the connection link the speed it is just like creating your new order for diet connect again so based on that you can provide the details here just cancel it now come back to Direct Connect Gateways. So when we click on this, we can just provide the name of the Direct Connect Gateway and the autonomous system number, the ASN number. And once you create this, what happens is, this may appear to be a two value field form, but once you create it, you will have provisions to access it through other forms or other services. So let's suppose I have a virtual interface and when I went to the create virtual interface, I was asked, I was asked about like, can you provide me the right gateway name that we have so i can just provide this basically that is a feature or that is a service so that is why it does not have much values to be taken into account for so you connect uh, your interfaces to the virtual private gateway not the other way around so these are the things that are really important for the direct connect so connection virtual interfaces lags and direct connect gateways i don't think so we need to dig more into this you can as well read the documentation for further information on how everything is configured if you want and uh, i think you should and i think that's it from the demo side i think we can move on from this <laughs>